Hello, I'm Grant from Maker's Vlog and today I'm going to be talking about a little experiment I've been thinking of. So if you've seen a couple of my other videos, I've been talking about 5G and whether it's safe. And the consensus is, if you haven't seen those videos, is yes. However, there is an issue. And the issue is to do with just the sheer amount of wireless devices that we have and whether the amount of power that's just ambient and sort of background noise level um, is that dangerous if that increases and from a few studies that have been shown is that, that yes it is dangerous um, if those power levels start to rise if we have more and more devices using the RF um, waves and putting essentially electricity into the air power into the air that that could be dangerous now that's not what I'm wanting to test with with this experiment what I want to check is that there is a couple of arguments going around that the current recommended safe power level which is uh, about uh, one watt per uh, meter squared of background power which we are currently well below there is an argument going around that that is too high that if we reach that it will be dangerous and people will be getting ill from it essentially and so what i want to check is is it dangerous at that level? I want to test and see what the um, what the effects would be if something was exposed to that power level for an extended period of time. Now, I've chatted to a local university, uh, the one that I'm, I'm now currently part of, and I'm trying to see if there's a potential to run this experiment with them because they have far better equipment than what I have, and they can do this on like a cell level. What I'm going to do in here isn't going to be as sophisticated as that. Basically what I want to do is um, using plants of some shape or form. I'm not sure which plants yet. Um, in fact, if anyone has any ideas on that, let me know. But essentially what I was going to do was have several plants. So we're going to have uh, P1, P2, and P3. So P1 is going to be the control. So it's just going to be a plant grown in normal environments. Just normal RF background radiation, everything else the same as the other two plants, but just generally in background. That's going to be the control. Second one, I'm going to put into a Faraday environment. So that's no RF, no um, radio radiation or EMF or anything like that within reason um i'm going to obviously or essentially build a faraday cage around this to try and stop the rf waves from from getting into it i can't stop everything but i'm going to at least reduce it as much as possible and then the last one is going to be the exposed so c f and e and the exposed one, it's going to be subjected to essentially a high power level of RF radiation, EMF, for an extended period of time. And I'm going to compare each of these and see. Now, ideally, the, well not ideally, the, the RF radiation itself affects things at a cell level, really. If, if it's going to affect it, it's, it's going to be at a cellular level. I don't have the capability of, of looking at the cells really I, I don't have any microscopes or anything like that I, I can maybe see if i can get one and maybe check the the leaf structure i might be able to see if there's any changes in that I, I don't know this isn't going to be a fantastic test again i am talking to a university to see if i can actually get this done with like petri dishes of cells and then be able to actually see how the cells um, react under these conditions at the very least, if I don't get to do that, this one will definitely be happening at the very least. So both of these, P2 and P3, will be um, in a Faraday environment of some shape or form. This one, completely Faraday, the only, the only RF that's definitely going to be in there that, that I, I can't get around would be that from a grow light. Because I want to control as many of the variables as possible. So all of these will be in, as best as I can get it, the same um, environments so they're going to have grow lights they're going to have the same grow lights as best as i can do 
they're going to be um, watered at the same time I'm going to have automatic watering in there automatic feed all that good stuff um, and they're going to be essentially in a dark room apart from the grow lights for this one that's going to be faraday from rf the grow light's going to need to be inside the faraday cage and it's obviously going to jet emit some emf and i can't help that but it's going to be the same emf that's going to be exposed to all of these because they're all going to have the same grow lights so yes it is getting emf but it's still reduced drastically so i'm just accepting that as it's going to have emf from the grow light this one the one that's going to be exposed i have another issue and that is frequency so there, there are a lot of frequencies essentially that you could use and upping the power level for one frequency doesn't inherently up the power level for the other frequency so which frequency do i up which frequencies do i bombard this with i'm not sure to be perfectly honest and i'm not sure what i have the capability of doing um one thing i did think of was actually using a, a microwave a microwave oven and essentially use the equipment from it the transmitter and everything else but just drop the power so rather than the microwave being 800 watts have it one watt and observe the the results from that i think that would be quite good because um with 5g microwaves are the sort of thing that people are concerned about even though they're they're strictly speaking their millimeter wave that's what they're worried about is that oh it's in the microwave bracket so it's going to microwave us and i think using the microwave frequencies and an actual microwave oven but at that low power would demonstrate that actually it's the power that's the issue not the actual frequency itself could do that what i am leaning towards is potentially having another plant that's also going to be exposed but only to the 5g frequencies or a 5g frequency upwards of you know 40 gigahertz or thereabouts and then have this one exposed to current common frequencies um, i could even expand this even further and have a fifth plant and so have this one to common frequencies so like your 433 your 800 Oops, your 900 and 2.4 gigahertz and 5. So these are sort of common frequencies that, that I know were used for transmitting devices, which are the, the issue, the potential issue anyway, of, of increasing in power. And these are quite some quite common frequencies. So I think bombarding them with, with all of these would be a relatively interesting test because other frequencies outside of this they may not increase in the way that we're expecting because you know that a new smart device is probably going to fall into one of these frequencies or use one of the new 5g frequencies so i was thinking of potentially having this one with just those common frequencies then have this one with 5g plus the common frequencies no, that looks like an X. Let's have that one with 5G plus the common frequencies and then have this one with just the 5G. If you'd seen uh, my last video, I was talking about whether 5G is safe. I made a prediction that 5G in theory could be actually safer than the other frequencies and other, these other frequencies at higher powers because the wavelength is so small it can't actually penetrate the body and it struggles to get through objects so i was thinking that this could be a good test in that we could compare the 5g only frequencies to the common frequencies and see what the the comparison is between the two that's the idea anyway and then also have this one which is the amalgamation of the 5g plus the common frequencies here which would then um you know show does having all of these frequencies bombarding it you know is there a sort of combination effect where that all of them together cause issues i don't know um so that that's the idea now again this is plants um you need to really see these things at a cellular level to be able to see whether there's an issue i may be able to do that with the plants again as i said looking at the leaves something like that i, I don't know um hopefully 
university potentially comes back um, and lets me do this on a, a, uh, a cell scale, which would be a lot better because it would be a lot more controlled environment and all that good stuff. But uh, I'm going to, at the very least, I'm probably going to go ahead and, and attempt to build this and, and start putting this, this experiment together. You will definitely see me build it. Um, potentially, this, well, sorry, the, it's nearly the end of 2019. Um, you'll see me build it in 2020. The actual experiment itself could run for potentially a year. I'm not sure. It needs to be quite long-term exposure to all these things. But what I will be doing is putting in a lot of monitoring equipment so probably using a raspberry pi or something like that have cameras set up and um, time lapses video feeds all that because i don't want to disturb this it's probably going to go in there i have a sort of cupboard off to the side you can't see that's dark and no, no windows and it's probably going to go in there and i want to have it as little exposure by me as possible because if i open that door this light from in here gets in it could um, skew results not massively but it could so i'd rather avoid it if at all possible so as much as I'm able to remotely monitor this, I'm definitely going to do that. Um, so I may put updates of, um, you know, some statistics as they go out, you know, halfway video, quarter way video, I don't know. Uh, I'll wait and see. But at the very least, you'll definitely see me building it because um, I'll need to build big enough Faraday cages um, to contain the plants. I need to work out what plants to use. Again, if anyone has any um, good suggestions, I don't have enough room to do this properly for want of a better word because realistically p1 might grow differently to p3 regardless of conditions just because of the seed or the type of plant that it came from that it might grow slightly differently um you know there, there's variations there that we can control so realistically we should have several sets of these um, you know, like three P1s, three P2s, three P3s, etc., and then take the average across them. I don't have the room to do that or the capacity, so it's going to be one set, and we'll see. Um, if I can think of a plant that um, might limit that as much as possible, I might go with it. I was thinking potentially um, getting grafted like lemon tree plants or something like that, that, that are, you know, they're all cut from the same plant and graft them onto a rootstock and, and grow them that way. I don't know, but then a tree like that, it'll take a very long time to, um, to grow and requires a lot more space as well. Um, so I'm not sure on that. Potentially a bonsai tree, tomato plant even, I'm not sure. But if anyone has any ideas on that, please uh, uh, let me know below. But um, yes, that is my uh, upcoming experiment. So if you want to see more about that, um, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, any tips? please by all means um, either email me, the email's in the description or, or comment below. Um, I definitely read them all. So yeah, thanks for watching.